We're doing this test on mathematics. Hello, we're Jacob. It's learning. And if you look at it, we have all of the types of tests that this problem, the first problem, I should say these problems actually um, occur. There's one from the mathematics uh, teacher exam 6 through 12 and it was from the California teachers exam but the principle is the same there's also another one from uh, an SAT exam and there's another one from the ACT we hope these help okay so three numbers X Y and Z have a sum of 871 the ratio is 4 to 5 for x and y, and the ratio of y and z is 3 to 8. Which of the following is the value of y? Now, immediately, you had the first part of your equation given to you, x, y plus z equals 871. So you can read these steps later, or you can pa hit pause and do, you know, hit pause and say this is what it is, but this is your setup. x plus y plus z equals 871. And your ratio is 4 equals x and 5 equals y. And 3 equals y and 8 equals z. And already you see you have two different values for y because the first one is x when it's compared to, to uh, y. And then the next one, y is compared to z. And so when you look at this, you're going, well, x is really 80% of y. Some people are going to try to solve it that way, and there's a way to do it, but it's longer. And this way is already long, the way we're going to show you. So let's go here. Okay. Um, you want to cross multiply and start figuring things out. So when you have x, y is 4 to 5, and it's always whatever is um, what's given. It's always the first variable that's given. So the first variable given was x. And then when you come back up to the equation, the first variable given here was y. So you put y here. And, you know, you have it here, x to y, 4, 5. And y to z is 3 eighths. And then you cross multiply. So when you cross multiply 5x, 4y, and they equal each other because you have an equal sign. And the same thing here, 8y equals 3z. Okay. Um, now you have an equation set up, so you use substitution to do what you have to do, x plus y plus z equals 871, and here you have x equals negative y minus z plus 871, it equals 0. Okay, let me explain to you what's happening here. You're taking out x and isolating this x so that you can somehow do something with these and get it to itself. When you look at that, already you could say that this is either substitution, and for those of you who took the last parts of Algebra 1 and the beginning of Algebra 2, you know that this is elimination and substitution. And so this is what you're really doing. You're either using elimination or substitution. First part of this, I'm trying to do substitution. The next part of this, I'm doing elimination. And when you do this in Algebra 1 and 2, you'll find that they're kind of the same. Okay, when you do that, you're going to pull 5, this 5, from the x over. And we'll go on to the next slide. This now becomes 5. Where are you getting it from? This 5. Okay, we're putting it back into the equation. Why? Because it was already here. So you have 5x equals x, negative y minus negative z plus 8, 7, 1. Now you have a new equation, and if you look at it, I put brackets here because once you see the brackets, you know you're going to go on ahead and do distribution. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So why is this 5 becoming down here negative? 5y because 5 times negative 1y is what this is becomes negative 5y. Uh, same thing here, this is a positive 5, but it's going over to this negative z, so it's negative z. And then you're getting 5 times 871, which was done over here for you, which is 4,355. Okay, anybody remember this? This is the quadratic equation. Remember, a 
x plus b y only thing is your variables are changing plus c constant equals zero okay you now know you're going to start trying to solve for something i will explain why this 4y is over here uh, it looks like we're just putting things into equations, which we kind of are, but this 4y was never taken out on the other slides and never taken out of the equation, so we have to put it here. If we don't put it here, we're going to have an awkward equation. I'm going to say something to you. You have choices here. You have A is 144, B is 156, C is 195, and D is 225. Guess what? If you don't start doing this and understanding what's going on, you're soon going to get the wrong number or you're not going to get any of these. And then you're going to panic and guess. And if you don't guess the right answer, um, you're going to have some problems. Okay. We come back and we solve this equation. And here we have this is 4y. Now remember I said substitution and elimination on the other slide. That's what you do when you're doing system of equations. So we already had this part here. Where did this 8y, 3z? Hey, I'm not crazy. We put it here. Why did we put it here? Because we had it before and we never got rid of it because it was one of our original ratios here. And all we did was we went uh, we went 3 over 8 equals y over z. Remember this? And then when we cross multiplied, we got 3z equals 8y. And I deliberately kept the y over here. They're the same thing. You can go ahead and write this 8y here equals 3z. It doesn't matter. It's the identity theorem. They're kind of the same. But here's the situation. You have a y here. You have a y here. Try to keep everything lined up, as I'm sure your algebra teachers have taught you. Okay? Let's try to keep everything lined up. You have it here. Okay. Now, here you are. 8y minus 3z equals 0. Now you have a true system of equations, and you can go ahead and solve. We're halfway done, so when we get ready to solve, uh, look at this. Looks like a mess. We took this negative, we took the inverse of this and took this negative 4 over here. We took it over here. We got 9, negative 9y, excuse me, because when you add two negatives, you're adding two, you get negative 9y, 5z plus 435 zeros over here. Now you have 8y minus 3z equals 0, system of an equation. Guess what? Negative 9y minus 5z plus 4,355 equals 0, 8y minus 3z equals 0. Okay, guess what? You want to eliminate something? You can multiply 8 by all parts of the equation. Let's do that. 9 times 8 gives you, if you do it here, Gave you an original negative 72y, negative 40, because it went against all the other parts of the equation, plus 30. Now you have 34,840 equals 0. And then you take it by this side. It's 9 times 8 is 72y. And then 9 times negative 3 is going to give you negative 27z. And then it equals 0. So can we solve now? Well, hopefully that's a mess. What's going on is now you can eliminate the y variable here. They're, they're canceling out. You have 34,840 plus 0 is 0. But guess what? Negative 40 plus negative 27z is negative 67z. So now you can solve Okay, for the equation. Negative 67z, you need to get your variable by itself. So you take negative 34 over here. This is negative 76z equals negative 34,000. I'm sorry, negative 34,840. You cross multiply, get rid of, and now z is positive because two negatives. Same thing over here. These two negatives cancel. It becomes positive. And when we go to the next slide, you have z over here. It's done again here. I crossed it out. Okay, now you have, because these canceled out, and became positives, 
Well, if you added straight across, two negatives become three, 34,000, sorry, 840. 34,840. over 67 and I left it negative over here they're positive it doesn't matter because their two negatives cancel out and that's 520 so Z is 520 okay so if you know Z's value a lot of people want to go back and say well if I put Z back in and get 871 you can do that but then you'd have to go back and find the value of, of X we're only looking for the value of Y so let's keep this easy if Z is equal to 520 and we got our Y values given to us, we had two values for Y. We had, we had Y equal to 5Y because remember our original equation, 4, 5, X over Y and we had 3 over 8 is ratio equals Y to Z. So now we can combine them. This is a part where a lot of people forget and unfortunately what is going to happen here is you have this is you originally have to remember you don't cross multiply here you just keep your values and you go straight across. Okay 5y, 3y, 8y. Where are you getting this 3? You have Z's value. You're getting this 3 from the value of y. And why aren't you doing the 5? Because we're doing it in relation to y is ratio to z. So you had an extra 3, multiply it, 8y plus 1,560. Excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze. 5y plus 3y, 8y, and then you multiply 3 over here so that you kind of even things out. 8y plus 1,560, you can take it over. Guess what? You only have positive terms. So even if you're taking it over as a negative, these are all positive. So you have y over here. You take 8 into 1,005. These canceled out. Okay, you had this on the other side. They canceled out and it was 8y divided by 8 over here. 8 into 1560 is 195. And that's what the answer was on the teacher exam, which is where this came from. And if the teacher had to take it, guess what? She gives it to you somewhere in Algebra 2. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next slide. Okay, our next question says, which of the following is the answer for logarithm 4 uh, base, or really pretty much base 4, 5 over 16? Um, step 1, there's one of the values that is negative because, as you know, the reason that it is negative is because it's underneath here. You have logarithmic rules. They're the same for the powers rules because, remember, this logarithm is a subscript but it means you're going to do something over here to the powers and this is implied that this is 5 to the first power this is log 4 to the 16th power but guess what this 4 and this 16 are intertwined so this value has a perfect square because you know that 4 times 4 equals 16. So try to find as much commonality as you can. And this fraction bar means you're going to subtract, subtract, excuse me, <laughs> subtract, subtract. And your logs always stay here. No matter what side, they're here until we finally form the situation because when you write it again it's telling you to keep it in a logarithm rhythm to the base of four okay just went over this this is subtracted it's negative anyway so you know you're subtracting it if it was five times if it was log four five times log four sixteen that would be something different 
And over here, we went ahead and we took this 16 and we made it 4 squared. Because as we said before, 4 squared is 4 times 4 is 16. So you're always trying to see how you can make these logarithms smaller and how you can make them faster and how far you can do this. Okay, now all you do is plug in these values. If you have a scientific calculator, that's fine. If you don't, they might just tell you to go ahead and leave the equation at log 4 to, uh, with your constant at 5 minus log 4 to 4 to the second power and that's fine too but look over here this is negative so I left it negative here and I kind of this is still subtraction shown here added it but when you add this down zip, 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 come right over here and your answer here is a we'll do more of these in case these get confusing for you your mind has to get used to jumbling these number around this this logarithm here to this number and then can we put an exponent in here you can't really put an exponent here because here uh, your 5 is a base of 5 it's reduced to its lowest number the next one would be to go 5 times 5 equals 25 and you don't want to do that okay see because you already have it at the lowest base all right, so there's no need to even do that. Let's move on to our next question. Next question is find the next four terms of the sequence 91, 83, 75, and it puts these ellipses here so that you can find out what they are in your N1, N2, N3, and N4. So if you subtract 91 from 83, you get 8. Okay, and then you go 83 minus 75, so we took care of this term, we got this, and then you would know, let's see if you do 75 minus 8, what you're going to get, and are you going to get the next sequence, which would be 67, let's see, let's go to the next so all you're doing it is so all you're doing is you're just subtracting 8 because you found that your common um, term that you're lowering it to is going to take each term down six points, take it down eight points, uh, take it down eight, not eight points, but take it down eight, I guess. Well, you could say points, but it's really levels. And, you know, you started here because you subtracted and you got 67. Okay, so every time you take it down eight, you get your numbers. Here's your sequence, 67, 59, 51, 43. Next four terms, that's all it asks you. There's another equation if you want to find out what are the terms, if it's like an indefinite amount or if it's a longer amount than that. And we'll be doing that next. So what happens if you were the 18th person out of a thousand to win a boat trip to Kathmandu? $97 was added for each time the person the person before them got the answer incorrectly. So let, let's take a look at this um, question. They're giving you a thousand just as a random number. A lot of your sequence numbers are 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 giving you a, a base number. They might even say 100, even if they said 84 you know that it is the first term in your sequence, and so you would put it here uh, if that really happened or existed. So just look at what this basically says, which is a number, a n, is equal to the first sequence plus n the number, which is this, 18th person, minus 1, and then D is the unknown variable, which stands for this $97 out here. So why are you putting it here? Because you don't, you, it's an unknown variable. So pretty much the equation is just about knowing where to put things. And um, we just randomly chose, it doesn't matter where the boat trip was to, we just chose Kathmandu. Um, and so you're just looking at what you're trying to do. You do have to remember your PEMDAS rules and even your plus sign is here, but you have parentheses 
which then go over to, oops, excuse me, PEMDAS, which then go over to your um, multiplication rules. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 17 times 97 plus 1,000. Okay, so if you had your unknown variable here was 97, some of you were asking where did this 1,649 come from? And this is where it came from. We added 97 times 17 is 9. Is 9 plus 0 is 9. 7 plus 7 is 14. That's how we know. And 7 times 9 is 1,649 added. So this is the total amount of money. I'm going to put a little dollar sign here. That the person would win. Simple. It's just knowing where to put numbers in a sequence. Have a good evening.